folks, my name, my name is Rafael del Castillo, and I am the executive director of Rainier Scholars. Thank you. We are here to showcase our mission, vision, and values for all of you. For 23 years, we have cultivated the academic and leadership potential of underrepresented students of color. We do this through experiences that are both rigorous and transformative. Our goal is to increase college graduation rates and empower a new generation of leaders. And you will be hearing from those leaders in just a little bit. We're also here to bring back some tradition because after three long years, we are here together in real life. That is definitely worth celebrating. So this is the tradition. When a cohort gathers at Rainier Scholars, we greet each other with a call and response. So I am gonna welcome you with a hearty Good afternoon, Rainier Scholars. And you all are going to respond with a deafening good afternoon, Raphael. You all ready? Okay. Good afternoon, Rainier Scholars. Good afternoon, Raphael. Oh, oh, we got a we got a latecomer over there, but that was great. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, welcome back. And to our scholars, families, and alums, welcome home. Bienvenidos todos a esta celebración de excelencia académica. We're also here to celebrate our high school graduates later in the program, and our college graduates, who you can see in your program, are finishing strong at colleges and universities all across this nation. Together, we're gonna to experience full circle moments when our mission and vision come alive across the years with our youngest scholars inspired by, by those who have come before them. Today, we're not just gonna hear from our speakers, we will find our bold selves in their personal journeys. Now, it's time to recognize and welcome some champions and partners in this room. Please wave your hands in the air so everybody can see you when you are recognized. And let's hold the applause until the end in the interest of time. First, I'd like to recognize our founder, Bob Hurlbut. Please wave our fiercest champions, our board of trustees. We have a, a few leaders in the room that we'd like to recognize individually. Tacoma Public Schools Superintendent, Dr. Josh Garcia. Seattle University President, Dr. Eduardo Peñalver and State Senator Jamie Pedersen. We want to acknowledge our school partners, private, independent, as well as public school districts, Seattle, Renton, Highline, and now Tacoma. Our college partners help us multiply every dollar we raise by as much as a factor of 10 in financial aid support for our scholars. Please recognize our 44 generous event sponsors, our career and leadership development partners, and now some folks close to home who are doing the work right along with us. The Rainier Scholars Alum Council. Our Rainier Scholars Families for Action, a committed group of parents. And welcome to all of you here today and also tuning in virtually from all over the world. We appreciate you. And last, but certainly not least, let's recognize for their heroic efforts during unprecedented times, our Rainier Scholars faculty and staff. <laughs> The 
That's the village we've gathered for the next 90 minutes. We will center hope and opportunity. Our program will fill your cup with a vision of what is possible when we start working with students early, when we reject the soft bigotry of low expectations, and when we commit to walking beside a scholar and a family for 12 years. Finally, I want to highlight another tradition, a scholar-led luncheon program. I am thrilled to introduce you to our MCs. Please give them a warm welcome in the room and on the chat. Sydney Goitia Doran and Danny Brambila Diaz. Thank you, Raphael, for that warm welcome. My name is Sydney Goitia Doran, and I am so excited to serve as co MC for this year's Rainier Scholars Luncheon. A little bit about me, I'm a senior at University Prep, a proud member of cohort 15, and I'm the middle child of six siblings and I'm super close with my family. Shout out mom, I see you right there. <laughs> my biggest passion is journalism and I'm currently editor in chief of my school newspaper as well as co-chair of the Black Student Union. I will be attending Howard University this fall. With yes with a major in journalism and minors in African American and environmental studies. I love the performing arts and was the lead in my school's production of Mamma Mia this year, my favorite movie slash musical. I don't know if there's any fans out there. <laughs> um, and joining me as co-MC is Danny. Thank you, Sydney. I'm Danny Brambila Diaz, and I am the other half of your MC duo today. And surprise, you got not one, but two theater kids in the house. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! I am also a member of Cohort 15, a Mexican-American, and a first-gen college student. Mi gente Latina, make some noise! I'm a senior at Eastside Prep. Shout out Eastside Prep table over there. <laughs> where I participate in the Student Leadership Council as a grade level representative, Latino Affinity Group lead, Ally for Equity, and book club leader. This fall, I'll be attending Brown University to study biochemistry and molecular biology with a minor in sociology. I am passionate about the intersections between bioengineering, healthcare, and equity, and am focused on tackling the rising heart health disparities among Latinos in the United States. We are both so excited to be here with you in person in this beautiful venue, celebrating our fellow high school and college graduates and our alumni who have come to this room tuning in from all around the world. Welcome and congratulations. Let's begin by acknowledging the traditions and history of the land we are on. With that in mind, we wish to acknowledge that we are currently on the traditional land of the Coast Salish people who identify as the Duwamish, Suquamish, Snoqualmie, and Puyallup, as well as all of the tribes of the Muckleshoot, Nisqually, Tulalip, and other Coast Salish peoples. We are grateful for their stewardship, past, present, and future, and we respectfully live and work as guests on these lands. The theme of this year's luncheon is Bold Moves, Bright Future. I can't imagine a better theme to represent all of the incredible scholars, staff, partners that make Rainier Scholars what it is. Throughout our time together today, and after you leave the event, we invite you to ask yourself, what does it mean to be bold? This is a question we can easily answer for our luncheon sponsors. Being bold means putting action and resources behind your commitment to educational equity. It means leading by example. It means helping to create opportunities for scholars and families, seeking to support their efforts at every turn. Leading the way are our PhD sponsors, Affinity and Matt Griffin and Evelyn Rosner. Without hesitation, you took your support to new heights this year. Rainier Scholars is reaching more scholars and families than ever before, shining a light on the pathway to and through college. 
We would also like to recognize our valedictorian sponsors, Amazon and Mortensen, who not only generously support the luncheon, but also provide students with internship opportunities, put together college care packages, and volunteer at leadership and career development events throughout the year. Representing an array of 44 sectors and industries, partners stepped up to sponsor the luncheon this year. They do so because education equity matters to them, because standing up for what they believe in matters, because living in a just and inclusive society matters. Actually, isn't that why we're all here today? To intentionally create a brighter future in which we can all thrive? Please join us in thanking our event sponsors for helping make this moment possible. When I first started my Rainier Scholars journey, I was in sixth grade. I was always a curious kid, so I was very excited and probably a little naive. Looking back, many long nights of homework and hours with my hand sore from annotating were in store for me, and I had no idea what I was really getting into. Until Rainier Scholars, I had never been truly challenged. Now, seven years later, I feel bittersweet about graduating from high school. On one hand, I'm ready for the next step in life where I can gain independence and focus on the areas I want to study. On the other hand, part of me wants to stay young forever. This is something I've worked toward for so long that it's hard to believe it's actually here. For a long time, college felt pretty unattainable because people like me don't have the same opportunities to get higher education, and it felt like the odds were against me. The college application process felt so surreal, and sixth grade me would have never imagined I would be accepted into nine colleges and universities. Thank you. <laughs> My goal has always been getting into college, and now I've done it. I remember my first Rainier Scholars classes and being absolutely fascinated with the content we covered in the humanities. The centering of civil rights and identity really appealed to me because I'd learned so little about it inside of the classroom. Despite being a student mainly oriented in the STEM and healthcare field, my exposure to content concerning the systematic inequities that often go unnoticed in our society has provided me the tools to think critically about the world around me and strive to make it a more inclusive and just place. Simply put, Rainier Scholars provides opportunities for boldness and brilliance. Our mission is to cultivate the academic and leadership potential of underrepresented students of color through rigorous, transformative opportunities that increase college graduation rates and empower new generations of leaders. We hope you enjoy this overview of the Rainier Scholars program. core, Rainier Scholars is a vehicle for change. Um, on an individual level, we support many students who will be the first in their families to graduate from college. This single step, earning a college degree, puts that scholar in a position to change the trajectory of their family. The education gap between kids of color and other young people is getting wider. We seek a greater impact. We seek more ripples of change that will extend from our scholars and their families. Rainier Scholars is essential because um, there is genius in every population of young people. And when we do not cultivate that genius in a particular group, we all lose. Every young person deserves an outstanding educational pathway. Rainer Scholars cultivates the academic and leadership potential of underrepresented students of color. Over 14 intensive months, we partner deeply with families, challenging scholars with rigorous academics along with cultural identity and resilience. We are empowering the next generation of leaders. The academic enrichment phase, it's kind of the art of like, teaching students and families strategies around how to be a good student and to overcome academic challenge, and then kind of waiting for it to click. But we do a lot of work helping parents know how to support their kid when their kid is challenged. Siempre están conectados con nosotros. Nuestros estudiantes saben que siempre estar en el escolar para apoyarlos y juntos lograr uh, los sueños de, de llegar a a tener un mejor futuro, un futuro lleno de excelencia. I have a little sister named Brianna, and she she wants to be in Rainier Scholars just like me. 
It also motivated my mom and dad to like maybe help me a little more in my homework because we have a lot. And it feels like they're in this with me. And Rainier Scholars like just brings like them more into like what I see. I'm looking forward to go to Lakeside because I got into there, which I got really excited about. Their confidence grows. Their identity is strengthened. They discover the power of their voice and satisfaction of their accomplishments. Scholars are ready to access the college preparatory pathway of their choice. As scholars grow, we provide a range of career development opportunities and help them navigate the college application process so they have an array of choices. Being a senior with college applications, there's a lot of resources, um, you know, like because my parents didn't go to college, there's a lot of information that they just can't provide me with, so it's really helpful to kind of know what's out there and um, what opportunities I can take advantage of. College graduates join a vibrant and supportive alumni community. As they make their way out into the world, they know their Rainer Scholars family is always there to support them. My future goals is to do pre-med, to do um, be a doc become a doctor. So I think knowing that there's other alums that have gone through that pathway can answer any questions that I have because as a first gen, you don't always have the answers to things that you might need, especially when doing all this process of like taking the MCAT, doing interviews and shadowing, knowing that there are other scholars ahead of you who've done that is really helpful because it kind of, they kind of lead the path and then answer any uncertainties that I might have. My name is Leti Tamaru. I'm currently a senior at the Bush School and I will be at Harvard University in the fall. My name is Itai Cortez Quiroz and I'm a senior at Seattle U and my plans for next year is to attend med school. We have 300 plus alums out in the world doing their thing. They're artists, they're educators, they're community organizers, um, doctors, you name it. They're rising up the ranks in their respective fields. They're joining boards. And if they're not already there, they're making their way to decision-making tables and really expanding their spheres of influence. So this is where we start to see systems change. After nearly 25 years in the Seattle community, with a proven theory of action, Rainer Scholars is growing. The catalyst to go beyond Seattle was to expand our impact and in summer 2022, Rainier Scholars Tacoma was launched. In Seattle, we are partnered with wonderful independent and private schools, as well as a number of uh, public school districts. In Tacoma, we're embedded within one public school district, and that opens up possibilities for changes in our theory of action while remaining true to that fundamental mission that we hold really close. As we look to the future, it is your support and partnership that will help get us there. We envision a bright future where together we all thrive. I wish every child, makes me emotional, I wish every child in this country could receive the type of education or the opportunities um, and the access to those opportunities that Rainier Scholars is able to provide for a very few. I wish every child had that opportunity. video almost made me cry. Anyway, <laughs> I am so proud to be part of Rainier Scholars. I have dreamed of going to college ever since I was a kid, and now that I am so close to achieving that lifelong dream, I am pretty proud of myself. Today, <laughs> thank you. Today, as I transition from high school to college, I am excited about the future. As much as I've loved my time in high school, these past four years have been the toughest I have faced so far. From challenging myself with rigorous academics, the COVID-19 pandemic, working multiple jobs to support myself, and much more. Despite the constant tasks and late nights, my excitement to attend a university and pursue higher education has never dwindled, but has instead continued to grow over time. And now I'm ready to put high school behind me and start this new chapter I have dreamed of for so long.
I completely agree, Danny. It's time for new adventures. And we are not the only ones who have felt the impact of the Rainier Scholars Program. For nearly 25 years, with the support and guidance of Rainier Scholars, more than 1,000 students have transformed their lives and altered their family trajectories. Today, Rainier Scholars is expanding its impact. In the summer of 2022, Rainier Scholars Tacoma was launched and welcomed their first cohort of students. With the addition, yes, a shout out to the Tacoma team. And with the addition of the Tacoma program, more scholars than ever will join the Rainier Scholars family. As I think about how Rainier Scholars helped to prepare me for my future, I'm thrilled to see more kids gain access to opportunities that have the power to change their future. And now I'd like to welcome Jennifer Ward, Chief Operating Officer of Rainier Scholars Tacoma to the stage. entirely weak. Let's try that again. Good afternoon. All right. I grew up in church. You got you to gotta talk back. All right. Um, so it's so nice to see so many of our supporters in one space. Um, thank you so much for making the time to be here, both in person, also virtually. What's up, Grandma? Um, as Sydney mentioned, my name is Jennifer Ward, and I have the privilege of launching the Tacoma program alongside the best team a girl could ask for. Tacoma team, wave your hand, shout something so they can see you. Now, while the Tacoma program is new, my personal journey at Rainier Scholars actually started back in 2003. I started at Rainier Scholars as a freshly minted UW graduate. Where my Huskies at? <laughs> I had just earned an engineering degree, and Rainier Scholars was one of my first two job opportunities. Much to my dad's chagrin. <laughs> he couldn't understand how someone could work so hard in engineering school to pursue a job in education. But he's come around since then. One of the major challenges we were working through in these early years was recruiting and retaining multi-generational African-American scholars and families, or MGAA for short. And that's just our way of saying black families who have been in the US for several generations. For this particular demographic, things just weren't working. The number of MGAA families applying to the program was dropping year to year, and we were struggling to retain them in our program. And like many people or organizations, early, in the early stages of developing an anti-racist lens, we initially looked everywhere else except ourselves. We were asking ourselves questions like, were we not attracting the right students? Were these families prioritizing other things over this particular opportunity? Or did they just not want it bad enough? To contextualize, this was the early 2000s. So this was long before the woke movement. It was way before there was a Trayvon Martin or George Floyd. We simply were not in a place as an organization where we could grapple with the nuance of different communities needing different things. We struggled at that time to understand that when you see disproportionate patterns in your data, it may be the system that needs fixing and not the people. And at that time, we were not ready or perhaps not fully willing to be bold. Fast forward to today, I'm so proud to work for an organization that continues to develop its anti-racist lens and push against the status quo, comfortability, and the way things have always been. I'll share a few examples of our evolution of being bold. Launching Rainier Scholars Tacoma was a bold move, and not just because they hired me. <laughs> We've been very successful working in Seattle, Highline, and Renton school districts, so it really would have been easy to just stay in that lane. But through the work of our 2020 strategic plan, our team made the bold decision to deepen our impact and expand our reach by branching out to a new region. And I want to give another shout out to Tacoma Public School Superintendent Josh Garcia, Amanda Scott Thomas, and her team. They've been incredible partners and champions of our work. 
Developing a public school uh, model was a bold move. While Seattle and Tacoma have the same mission and vision, the approach to accomplishing our mission is where each program differs. Our Seattle program offers a model where students pursue both public and private school options. But in Tacoma, we're building a model meant to support students through the public school pathway from elementary through high school. Embracing an equity lens in our program design is a bold move. The framework we used to do this is called targeted universalism, and it was developed by John A. Powell out of UC Berkeley. It basically means using targeted goals to accomplish universal outcomes. The curb cut is a great example of targeted universalism in action. The curb cut was first introduced to the US, in the US, after World War II because disabled veterans were returning home from war and couldn't easily access sidewalks. After lots of advocacy and lobbying, curb cuts are now a normal part of our everyday lives, and everyone benefits from them, not just those whom they were designed for. We're designing the Tacoma model for those furthest from opportunity which for us means centering multi-generational African-American scholars and families in order to produce the best outcomes for everyone we serve. If you're interested in seeing what that looks like, come check us out on a tour. We would love to have you. While I'm excited about all of the bold moves happening across Seattle and Tacoma, there's still so much for all of us to do. And I'm using the collective us, which includes all of you. But to ground us a bit, I want to acknowledge that we're living in a time of heightened violence. The World Health Organization defines violence not just as the physical use of force, but also the way that power is used against a group or a community. So this includes the way that power is used to uphold systems of oppression. Think about it. Roughly one in three children in the US cannot read at a basic level of comprehension. Black people hold only 4% of wealth in the US, despite making up three times that percentage in population. There is aggressive disagreement about what a fact is and which histories can be taught in the classroom. And this doesn't even start to touch on the more overt acts of violence. We've had 147 mass shootings this year alone and 377 school shootings since Columbine in 1999. I've talked a lot about how Rainer scholars will be bold, but to counteract a system of oppression means all of us have to be willing to swim against the current in our respective areas of influence. Now, I know this is a fundraiser, so let me be clear. Yes, you can be bold with your checkbook. <laughs> but what I'm really asking all of us to think about is about being bolder than that. How will you be bold with your time, your talent, and your treasure? How will you actively uplift those furthest from opportunity on a systems level? Let's work together to get beyond the mission of Rainier Scholars so that we can start to realize our vision, a just and inclusive society with equitable representation of people of color at all levels of leadership and influence. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all, let me just say, my favorite thing about when Jennifer gets on the podium, it's like a court case, because she tells the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, okay? <laughs> Jennifer, your words just wow me every single time. Give it up for Jennifer Ward, everyone. <laughs> it was incredible to learn about Rainier Scholars Tacoma and to hear about the vision for even more growth and greater impact. You know what? I'm feeling inspired, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I'm going to be bold. 
This fall, I'll begin my freshman year at Brown, not only as a part of the class of 2027, but as a member of a new cohort of students graduating in 2031 under the program of liberal medical education. This innovative approach combines undergraduate education with professional studies in medicine into a single eight-year program that accumulates in, in attaining an MD. So apart from being admitted to my undergrad to study biochem and molecular bio, I have also gained early assurance to Brown's Albert Warren Medical School. And I know, I know, I see my mom, she's sitting over there, she's like, I mean, you're not gonna graduate till you're 26. When are you supposed to get married and have a family? Like, I'm sorry, mom, I just really like going to school, okay? <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, I'm interested in helping my fellow Latinos who are currently being affected by one of the greatest heart disparities of all time. As according to the American Heart Association, both Latino men and Latina women face a near 50% chance of developing a heart problem after the age of 20. This opportunity to attain my professional degree in eight direct years without worrying about the MCAT or med school applications has allowed me to surpass the economic and social barriers that have kept students like me from entering the medical field. I see my future as a clinical physician in cardiology so I can conduct research while also consulting, educating, and advising my patients in my community as they seek a path toward better health. Without Rainier Scholars, I wouldn't have been empowered to take the reins of my own education the way that I have. I will be the first person in my entire family to attain an MD and at an Ivy League university. <laughs> and my future success will change the social and economic trajectory of my family's history forever. And with that, I am so excited to introduce a short video giving you a glimpse at the young minds of our most recent scholars who are beginning to develop their own passions and interests and truly demonstrating what it means to be bold. All right, I'm just, we're gonna just jump right into it. All right, let's do it. All right, what does it mean to be bold? Uh, to be fearless, to be confident, and to take chances. Probably like, not rude, but like, straightforward. Take risk and like, be confident in yourself and like, think positive. I think it just means to have confidence in what you're doing and just, you know, letting yourself know that it's gonna be okay and that you can do it. To be bold means to stand out or just to be noticed. To be bold, it means to be courageous and be confident to take risks. To be bold means to be brave, to do things that you wouldn't think you would do, to speak up when others are quiet, just to be dynamic in your own space. Have you, in the past year here at Rainier Scholars Tacoma, been bold? Have there been some times where you can think of? Yes, I got an epic award for being bold. It was like time management. Um, and integrity and stuff. I do think so, actually. Just, um, you know, being in Rainier Scholars in general has just been such a ride for me. And I feel like just, you know, being in Rainier Scholars, going through all these new classes and having fun has been very bold. Yes, in Conclave and in Lit, when we had to take a test and do, and do writing and do write about the book and everything, it was kind of hard, but I took a risk to do it and study and learn and do all the homework that was from five classes. Your scholar here in uh, Rainier Scholars Tacoma been uh, fearless, been bold this past year? Uh, my daughter Isabella has gained a lot of confidence being in Rainier Scholars. She's gained amazing problem solving skills and that builds confidence and I think that's how she was able to be bold. I have seen her be bold by advocating for herself and going after what she needs. So one of the things that the scholars do is they, instead of the parents helping with homework, they have to reach out to their teachers and ask for help. And that's something that has really prompted her to step out of her comfort zone. And Rainier Scholar, she's bloomed and now she wants the opportunity to speak up, to give her opinion and to help others be their best as well. What does it mean to see a bright future uh, student for your scholar? Well, just getting him into this program at the age that he's in 
and him being engaged and just committed to this program and just breaking the cycle for our family and the generations before him. The biggest part about that is her little brother watching her grow into the, the young lady she is. You know, it's, he follows her, she's his inspiration. And so, you know, it, it's everything. We appreciate it. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, you're getting that. <laughs> Not putting limits on ourselves. If there's something we see we want to do or something that we see we want to try or be a part of, to feel that we have the opportunity and the space to do so and to contribute to whatever that space is. It means that she is the first black woman to graduate for, from college um, in our entire family. She is able to make really strong choices and advocate for herself and she is just happy. I do see a good college and a bright future because uh, even though like the pandemic kind of stopped like a good education for me, Rainer Scholars has really been putting me back into it and usually during before the pandemic I had a good reading score but during it it fell but I'm back up to ninth grade reading level. I've learned not just about you know subjects like math and reading but a lot of just you know learning about myself in general and learning that like what you said before being bold and going like going through you know all these fun classes to get to your future which I think is just you know something really important that Rainy Scholars does for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. You're awesome. Wow. Somebody get me some sunglasses because those are some bright young scholars. <laughs> I really loved what Ruth said about Rainier Scholars being a ride. It truly is. I am so proud of these young scholars. I am also proud of the person I am today. I'm intellectual, resilient, funny, passionate, compassionate, and as you can probably tell from that long list of attributes, I am extremely humble. <laughs> I've grown into a person who not only makes little me, but everyone else around me proud. This would not be possible without my mentors from Rainier Scholars, who enlightened me with perspectives to help me navigate the world. The knowledge they instilled in me inspired me to try new things. All of this has led me to finding my passions and accomplishing every goal I set for myself. If everyone had the chance to participate in a program like Rainier Scholars, the world would be a better place. Now, I get to introduce two of my favorite speakers today. You think Danny and I are doing a good job? Wait until you see the intelligence and charisma of this duo. Here to share their experience with Rainier Scholars Tacoma are two of our youngest scholars, Demario and Charlie. and good afternoon. My name is Charlotte Panor, and I'm a fifth grader at Larchmont Elementary. And I'm... <laughs> and I'm Demario Leslie. I'm a fifth grader at McCarver Elementary. Charlie... Charlie and I are students of Rainer Scholars Tacoma, or RST, cohort number one. And today we're going to tell you about our experience so far. But first, wow, this is the def this is definitely the largest audience I've been in front of. <laughs> My God. It's crazy that we're both being streamed on YouTube right now. This, <laughs> this crowd is huge. Oh yeah, this is a much larger crowd than my school choir performance last winter. But you know what? To me, that's what bold looks like. Being proud of yourself, taking risks, and getting out of your comfort zone. So, Demario, that's exactly what we're doing here today. 
Of course, Charlie and I are going to share what we've learned about ourselves since joining Winter Scholars, what's been challenging, and how we've grown as individuals. We'll also share about our bright futures. Now let's get this party started, kid. Boys. I'm not doing it, please. Yes. Go, go. It's still you. And I joined RST last summer and started Summer Stretch Academy. I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting myself into. I've learned a lot about myself. I've seen how learning new things makes me smarter and that I have more capability to learn, especially in math class. And when homework, and when homework gets harder, I'm using my resources, like the math charts in the back of my notebooks and around my room. For me, I thought I was organized and can handle a busy schedule, but Rainier Scholars helped me th take that to another level. Also, shout out to my mom who's here today. She really helps me stay on track. Before Rainier Scholars, I avoided mistakes, but at Summer Stretch Academy, we had this thing called the Felix Copa Board, or Happy Mistakes in Latin, where we wrote down all of our mistakes. At first, we were all a little unsure about it, and the wall was blank. But slowly, everyone started writing down the, their mistakes, and the board filled up to the point where there wasn't any room left to write. That was pretty cool to see. We all make mistakes. It's what you do next that matters. And I think of challenges, conclave and lit classes were definitely the hardest. I didn't understand conclave at first, but I learned a a lot from the books about culture and cultural identity, and they helped me understand history more. I like learning about pe people and cultures. There's a lot of cool black people out there that have done a lot of great things. In lit class in my other schools, we don't do writing like at Rainer Scholars. We only write essays. And how much we were reading was challenging too. But I learned to get the hard stuff over with first to go to the easiest work. Annotating in lit class and Tuesday class was my challenge. I didn't like writing in the margins, maybe because we were always taught not to write in books, and it felt kind of weird to me. It took a while for me to break that habit, and Miss Huff was encouraging and helped me learn to do it properly. Also, as a fourth grader, waking up every day at 6.30 a.m. was tough especially since it was during the summer. As well as all the reading and homework in four subjects, I would sometimes start doing my homework on the bus. That worked out, except when we would go over a speed bump, my pencil slid across the page. I'm sure the teachers could tell which kids were doing homework on the bus. <laughs> These bold moments have helped me grow as a person. I'm more independent, more reliable, and more helpful. My parents could ask me to do more things, and I do them. Plus, the knowledge I now have about the history of people of color helps me understand the present more. Thanks, history. I hear you, Charlie. I'm more independent and mature. In school recently, I noticed I was figuring stuff out on my own, and I'm learning more things I can do by myself. And I'm helping the others be the same way. I've grown in a different way, too. Test scores. <laughs> Because of, because of Rainer Scholars, my math and spelling and writing scores are going from 90s to 100. Before we, before we talk about our futures, Charlie, we can't forget about Rattlesnake Ledge. Maybe some of you out there have done this hike. This field trip was definitely a bold move, 100%. <laughs> it was my first time doing a hike ever. I was terrified to the max. <laughs> but, but the view at the top was really nice. I saw public estates and buildings as well. I could see the road and cars down below. It was worth the climb. Oh yeah, Rattlesnake Ledge. I think a lot of us were bold that day. I sure was. It felt like a billion hours going up and only 15 minutes going down. <laughs> And I actually walked down with Demario. But I would have never done anything like that if it weren't for Rainier Scholars, for sure. I think that's a theme for my RST experience. The adventures, opportunities, how I'm growing, the things I'm learning. Rainier Scholars is making these possible for me and my family. It makes me excited for my bright future. I'm not sure what college I want to go to yet. 
I love art, drawing, and writing. I write short stories every now and then, and my favorite author is Lisa Thompson. The Light Jar is my favorite book of hers. I'd like to write mystery and adventure books like her one day. When I envision my future, it's a full lot of homework. <laughs> because I'm going to be an RST for another 11 years. <laughs> God. I'm really into boxing and plan to be in the World Boxing Championship when I'm an adult. After I'm done with boxing, I plan to play football and attend a historically black college or university. As you can tell, I have a couple of different visions when it comes to my bright future. It's like Charlie Rayner scholarships helping me get there. It's hard to believe you've only been a part of RST for 10 months. It's already made such a big difference for both of us. Imagine where we'll be and who we'll be in five to 10 years from now. I would like to think we'll be emceeing this event like Danny and Sydney. <laughs> Thank you all for supporting me and your scholars. We've only just begun. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> We've, We've only, only just, just begun. begun. <laughs> we are so excited to introduce our next speaker. Linda Wen is a proud alum of Rainier Scholar's very first cohort, Seattle cohort. She graduated from the University of Washington in 2013 and joined Teach for America in Brooklyn, New York. Linda currently serves as a middle school principal at Uncommon Schools, a nonprofit network of high performance char public charter schools whose mission is to close the achievement gap amongst students from low income backgrounds. Please help us welcome Linda. Good afternoon, my name is Linda Nguyen and I am a proud alum of Rainier Scholar Seattle Cohort One. I am honored to be here today with you all and what a beautiful homecoming moment this is to not only return to the community that played a critical role in my success, but to see its growth and impact over the past 23 years. As I listen to DeMario and Charlie share their stories and experiences as a new Rainier Scholar, I am reminded of my own. My family immigrated to the United States in November of 1995 as Vietnam War refugees. Being the youngest of nine and the only one with an opportunity to have a K through 12 school experience in America, education was the only pathway to success. But what is success without access? What is potential without a platform? I navigated through three different elementary schools hoping to find a space that cultivates my academic abilities and sees past the challenges tied to my socioeconomic status and ethnic background. I hadn't found it. Then, in the winter of 2000, I received an invitation to be a part of the first cohort of Rainier Prep. I specifically remembered the phone call with a Vietnamese translator describing to my family what the program entailed. All my parents understood was that I would receive additional classes and support to get me to college. I knew very little about the journey I was about to embark on and how it would indefinitely shape the trajectory of my education and career. To my fellow alums in the room, how quickly did we exchange the bags hung over our shoulders for rolling backpacks with Sandra Cisneros' House on Mango Street, Richard Wright's Black Boy, and Three Inch Binders? How loudly did we respond to Ms. Smith's good morning greeting before heading upstairs at Aki Kurosi to do pre-algebra and chemistry on Saturday mornings with planners marked courage, perseverance, and integrity in our hands? How hard 
We worked on Wednesday evenings, attending classes after a full day of attending classes, but it was worth it because we weren't a student among a thousand others. We were seen and heard as a scholar among 52. How brave we were to share our experiences, explore our identity, and be captains of our own fate in Invictus class. How eye-opening it was to visit Whitman College, to stay in dorms at 12 years old, participate in leadership workshops, giving us just a small glimpse into our college experience. How emotional were our conversations with our academic counselor, shout out to Jennifer, that she was my academic counselor, <laughs> throughout middle and high school as we faced challenges of being underrepresented minorities, sitting in spaces where the pressure to achieve was high, the expectations low, and the pathway to success was not smoothly paved. How aspirational were our college applications to colleges our families have never even heard of or thought was possible and the impact it would make on our future. I was part of the first cohort to experience the what and the how of Rainier Scholars, but it took some time for me to understand the why. And for the past 10 years, I realized I'm living my why. After graduating from the University of Washington in 2013, I moved to Brooklyn, New York as a Teach for America Corps member and taught students whose futures were predetermined based on their zip code and racial background. What was initially just a two-year commitment to education led to five and now 10. Because in my students, I saw myself. I saw the vision Bob set when he brought Rainer Scholars to Seattle. I saw the reason why Rainer Scholars is not a two month or two year program, but 12, because the need goes beyond the classroom. I saw the potential and power when kids are promised the education they deserve. I saw dreams unfold when we dare to raise the bar and break down the barriers. As a Rainier Scholar, I was empowered to be a leader and change maker. When my days as a leader in education get difficult, and boy has it been difficult, I stop and think about my why. And while my why includes the 200 faces I see every morning at 7.30 arrival as a middle school principal at Uncommon Schools, it also includes the familiar faces in this room. These faces of those sitting here who believed in me, taught me, counseled me, and poured their hope into me. And now, I stand before you having come full circle and continuing the work to make an impact. So thank you. Whether this is your first luncheon or 23rd, thank you for your support. By pouring into a Rainier Scholar, you are making bold moves towards the fight against educational inequity, and you are creating many more bright futures. And now, I am pleased to present our final speaker this afternoon, Rainier Scholars Board Trustee, Kevin Baker. Besi besides being a husband to his wife, Julia, and father of their Two sons, Benjamin and William. Kevin is an executive director with Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, working closely with successful individuals, families, and institutions. Kevin attended the University of Toledo as an academic All-American student athlete and also earned an MBA from the University of Notre Dame. Kevin is here today to invite you to support Rainier Scholars and to share how one couple's commitment to education in the face of inequity coupled with the impact of an organization very similar to Rainier Scholars changed the trajectory of three generations and continuing. Please join me in welcoming Kevin Baker. Hi, 
I, um, I was chuckling as that introduction uh, was said. It's, it's so classic. Get the wealth management guy up there to ask for the money, right? <laughs> Um, so, in my industry, I was told to, to tell stories to make things more compelling. So, I, I thought I'd, I'd use these four minutes to share my story. Um, I grew up in Northwest Ohio and had a close family that lived in Detroit, Michigan. And back in the late 80s and early 90s, an organization similar to Rainer Scholars impacted my family. Uh, the organization was Sponsors for Educational Opportunity, or SEO. It's an organization whose mission is to create a more equitable society by closing the opportunity gap for young people from historically excluded communities. Sound familiar? Now, this is the part where you'd expect me to say that I participated in SEO, and it's why I'm here today. But that's not the case. Uh, it wasn't me who participated. It was my cousin Frank, Frank Baker, who's a great Google search if you want to uh, learn about someone who's really made an impact. Um, SEO approached Frank, my Aunt Juanita, and Uncle Frank when he was in middle school. They guided him to private independent school when no one in my family knew what private independent school was. They pointed him towards the University of Chicago when that wasn't on my family's radar. And it's there that Frank thrived as a student. He became a Rhodes Scholars candidate, excuse me, Rhodes Scholar candidate and went on to work at both Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. From there, he attended Harvard Business School and earned his MBA. And today, He's the founder of Sirius Capital, one of the few private equity firms owned by an African American. And here's where I think it really becomes special. All during this time, the family was watching. I was watching. My siblings were watching. My cousins were watching. And it all impacted us. My vision when I went to Frank's graduation at, at the University at, at Harvard was Goodwill Honey or Dead Poets Society, right? That's what I saw on TV. So when I got there and I expected to be able to point out and see Frank quite easily because of the color of his skin, I was shocked to see the amount of color, to see this, the international students that were there. It made me feel like that's where I belong and my family belonged. So when it came time for us to choose our undergraduate or postgraduate educational paths, we went big because Frank went big. Northwestern, Carnegie Mellon, Vanderbilt, Notre Dame. And when it came time for us to choose our career path, we went big because Frank went big. High finance law, diversity officers, medical sales. This luncheon just isn't about these amazing Rainer scholars that we've seen today. It's about the networks in which they naturally reside. Their families, their neighborhoods, their communities. You're not helping to uplift and change the trajectory of a student, but an extended family a neighborhood, and a community. Rainer Scholars, we have all the tools we need to impact lives through education with one exception, capital. We need your help, we need your participation. Help us with the capital we need to change students, to change families, to change neighborhoods, and to change communities. So now, from the wealth management guy. <laughs> this is your time to give. There are a few different ways to make your donation. At your table, you have a giving card you'll all, that you'll all be able to see. You can scan your QR code to donate or pledge. If QR codes aren't your thing, you can fill out the reverse side of your card to give by check or credit card. 
You can also text to give to the number uh, displayed behind me. Basically, any way that you want to give, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so we're going to take a few minutes for everyone to give in the room and at home. Our wonderful MCs will be up shortly. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting Rainier Scholars. It's us again. We cannot thank you enough for being a part of making Rainier Scholars Journey possible for more students in Seattle, Tacoma, and beyond. Your support helps to sustain and strengthen the programs so scholars can reach toward their bright future. We know that it takes a collective of people to realize our vision, and we are so glad that you are a part of that. We'd like to express some special gratitude for our table captains, whose actions and commitment helped make this event possible. They are board members, alumni, community leaders, educators, and good corporate citizens. Today, you all succeeded wildly in paying it forward to the next generation of diverse leaders. It means a lot to Danny and I especially because alongside our fellow cohort members, we will graduate high school and head off to college this year. 
We've grown up together, so it's very powerful to inherit the Rainier Scholars legacy. Now, it is time to welcome our friends and fellow Cohort 15 members to the stage. So come on up. Yeah, come don't on be up. shy, don't be shy. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, shout out best cohort, am I right, Sydney? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. See, we survived the debate about what color the dress was and the whip and the nene and Drake's sorry, hotline bling, all while doing school double time at the age of 13, okay? Mm -hmm. Not just anybody can do that, okay? It took a lot of strength. Yeah. It took a lot of strength. <laughs> awesome. So, as they come up, you guys can check out these beautiful sweatshirts we are wearing. Mm -hmm. They represent the colleges that we have been accepted to and have chosen to attend this fall. And some of us are still yet to make our final decisions, but we are filled with excitement and anticipation for what is next. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm so excited for you to meet our 2023 high school grads. Class of 2023, take a moment to be bold, wink, wink, <laughs> and take the mic. Hi, uh, I'm Gabby. I'm a current senior at Lakeside School. Um, and this fall, I will either be attending USC or Harvard. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I hope to study business administration um, while taking pre-law requirements. Hi, my name is Moose. Um, I'm a current student, uh, senior at Garfield High School. I'm committed to Seattle University. Hello, President. Um, <laughs> and I'm hoping to major in computer science and accounting. Hi, my name is Harlan Mitchell. I attend Mount Rainier High School, and I will be attending Smith College in the fall. Thank you. <laughs> I would like to major in government and minor in English language and literature and hopefully attend law school after that. Hi, my name is Joshua. I currently go to Franklin High School. I plan to go to University of Washington and I plan on majoring in engineering. Hello, my name is Tony Nguyen. I'm currently a senior at the Lakeside School and this fall, I'll be majoring in computer science at the University of Washington. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Leti Tamaru. I am currently a senior at the Bush School, and this fall, I will be at Harvard College. Um, and I'm excited to explore both STEM and humanities by double majoring. Hello, my name is Nayeli Santiago Benitez. I go to Bishop Blanchett High School and I plan to attend the University of Washington Bothell campus to become an educator and help promote and practice uh, ethnic studies. Hi, I'm Gianna. I go to Lindbergh High School. Um, this fall, I will be attending Johnson Wales University in the small state of Rhode Island. Um, I will be pursuing a bachelor's degree in baking and pastry and restaurant management. Go Wildcats! Hello everybody, my name is Yuriel. Um, I attend Lakeside High School and plan to attend Boston University in the fall. Uh, thank you. Which is where uh, I plan to learn more about the business sector and potentially major in finance. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, hi guys, my name is Baruch Teferra. Um, I attend the Over Lake School down in Redmond, and I am planning, I'm on attending the, the University I'm of Southern California down in California, guys. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joseph and I currently attend Lakeside School. In the fall, I plan to major in chemical engineering at the University of Washington. Hi, my name is Isabella Lee. I'm a senior at Mount Rainier High School and I'm going to attend Mount Holyoke College and I'm going to be majoring in sociology. Hi, 
Hi again, everyone. Oh, OK, the love is working. <laughs> Hi again, everyone. I'm Danny Brambila Diaz, and I will be attending Brown University, majoring in biochem and molecular biology. And I'm Sydney Guaitia Doran, and I will be attending Howard University this fall to major in journalism. Well, folks, we are ready to close. Are you inspired by our scholars, our alums, our families? So I just want to end by saying that uh, this event uh, speaks to me in a very personal way as well. As an immigrant, a Cuban-American immigrant, as a first-gen uh, college student myself, I have stood on the shoulders of people before me, my parents, hey mom and dad in Miami, uh, and my grandparents, and to see the full circle moments in this event really has filled my heart. I do want to take one final moment to thank Cohort 15, the class of 2023. <laughs> as well as our wonderful MCs, sit as well as our wonderful MCs who I think have done an amazing job for us today. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your support and have a lovely rest of the day.